Hey everybody, I'm Rhett here with my friend Parker, and we want to tell you about the 40-day digital detox that we are doing as a church family, and that's going to be minimizing the use of all our digital tech and screens and devices for this 40-day period for the purpose of increasing our capacity to be heart, soul, mind, body, complex beings created by a loving God so that we can grow in love for Him and one another. And I can't wait to do this. Park. What about you? Uh, I'm super, super excited. I think last time we sat down, we talked about this being a digital fast. Yeah. And can you help me? What's the difference between, because what you brought up last time was so helpful for me to understand. Detox, I get, you know, whether that's yes. food or drugs or whatever it is you're detoxing from. But you used the word fast last time. Help me understand that idea. Yeah. You know, and I, I might use them interchangeably here yeah. and there. Uh, fast being a metaphor, really, for what we're doing. Uh, detox maybe a little bit because we're we're ridding our ourselves of something that isn't necessarily healthy. Mm. Uh, whereas a fast, if you think about the traditional biblical fast of abstaining from the eating of food yeah. for the purpose of increased love and attention towards God, yeah. uh, a digital fast, the the principles are very similar. Our hope is to step back from consuming something. Yeah in order to give extra time and attention to God. Yeah. And I think we're going to see some great fruit from that. I it's, so. you know, I think I mentioned to you earlier, it's it's really one of those taste and see that the Lord yeah. is good sort of moments. Yeah. And so, you know, we, we talked a little bit last time about why we might want to do this, but Park, would you like to be less anxious and busy <laughs> in your life? Yeah, of course. I, do you want more time with God? Yeah. I, I think we yeah. all do have yeah, that hunger in us for sure uh you know would you like to recapture creativity and imagination and maybe just see things through more of a kingdom lens yeah yeah i know that's true for me and this is probably a big one for a lot of us but do you want to be more intentional about loving people well that god has put in your life yeah i, I mean of course and it's crazy to think that those each one of those can be impacted in, in like not a dramatic way, but sincerely in a very real way, just based on how we use our our time. Yeah, you know? and so that that's some of the fruit we're hoping to yeah. see from this 40-day digital detox, digital fast. Yeah. Uh, and if you're on the fence about whether or not to do this, I would just highly mm. encourage anybody you're talking to that I'm talking yeah. to, just give it a try. Yeah. You know, and we'll talk through right now some of the nitty gritty details of our recommendations and kind of best practices yeah. of ideas we've come up with. But obviously making any sort of change, stepping into a direction mm -hmm. where you're giving yourself increased opportunities to love God and love people, yeah. it's going to help. It's yeah. going to be beneficial. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for this. I, I mean, last time we got to sit down and really talk about the big flyover, why this is so important. And um, since then, we've we've had Holy Week, mm -hmm. and it's it was a powerful time. But in those rhythms of Wednesday and Thursday being in here uniquely for this particular this week, and then Easter service being able to celebrate the resurrection all together, I haven't had a minute to sit with middle school or high school students, and so I'm excited to process through this because yes. I feel like for them it's got to be a sales pitch in a, in, <laughs> in a way where it's like, are you willing to take? back some land in your life and in your heart yeah. and redeem some of the time where it's like, well, it's just, I, I just, you know, I go to school most of the day. I want to spend some time to relax. Like it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. And so I'm excited to talk through some of the, some of the, not necessarily the why, but how are we going to do this and yeah. where's the value going to come from? Yeah. I love that. And I just want to make a disclaimer uh, as we get into recommended practices. We have five mm -hmm. like official recommendations that we're going to go through. Yeah. But I will say I tend to be really idealistic mm -hmm. and I am more of a rule follower type. So mm -hmm. for me, I see these five things and I'm like, yes, I'm yeah. all in 100 percent. I'm going to do it exactly that way yeah. and try to maybe even go above and beyond that and add another five. Yeah. Uh, Park, what's your personality type when you see yeah. a list of recommendations? Um, I make my own rules. <laughs> you know, like I, it's it's helpful to see these, and I think it's really really good um, because these are practical. In, in my brain, my idea is like I'm just going to cut everything out, mm -hmm. and I'm going to go as extreme as I can. Whether that actually is helpful or not, you know, going into something like that, it's it's really helpful for me to be able to sit down with my wife and say, by yeah. the way, 
this is what I'm, and she's like, well, I'm going to need to get a hold of you at some point, you know? Yes. So, um, I, I try to, I think this is going to be really helpful. And I'm thinking about people who are in a different place. Like some of these things I've, I've already done. So one of them we'll get to is to turn off all notifications on your phone, except for calls and texts. And people who know me personally know how challenging and frustrating it can be to get a hold of me at times because my notifications are always on silent. And I've made, I've kind of drawn that line in the sand yeah. for myself specifically, but I know other people are in different places. And so I'm excited to be able to yeah. kind of process through this. And I think that's important to recognize just wherever somebody's coming from, it's going to be different than their, the person yeah. standing next to them. We yeah. all have our own history and, you know, habits with digital stuff and it's okay to take what we're saying and modify yeah. it, adapt it, yeah. make it realistic and doable for your stage of life, for mm-hmm. your dynamic in your household, yeah. you know, for the the people that are going to be affected by the decisions that you make, mm-hmm. have those conversations and think about, you know, whether it's implementing just one of these things yeah. or all of them or coming up with your own, how can it be something impactful yeah. for you? I do think, you know, one of the reasons I love doing following the rules and, and going big in that way is just because I think there's something to be said for a maximum impact with a significant change. You mm. know, the the less you change, the less you'll probably see much of an mm. impact. But if you're willing to at least take some significant steps, yeah. I think anybody who does this will see something yeah. happen. Yeah. Which I guess with that, again, it's really important to keep in mind the why you're doing this. Like what's the end yeah. goal? And so one more time, can you help me? Can you help anyone who's listening? What is the primary goal and why we're doing this? It's yeah. last time we talked about like people respond in fear to circumstances. So mm-hmm. n- no Disney ever again for my kids because of A, B, C, and D. Yeah. But what's the real goal here? Yeah. I mean, when you strip it down to its most basic principle, the reason we're doing this is because we want to grow in our love for God and our love for mm-hmm. people. Yeah. And we believe that taking steps to just be really intentional about our use of anything in life, but yeah. especially our digital devices and this tech, area, yeah. this area that in our time, in our place, is really a, a huge part of our lives. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is going to be one way that we are discipling the people under us and ourselves is how how do we do this well? Yeah. And if we can monitor it, if we can, you know, uh, if we can live it out in such a way that it honors God, yeah. uh, then all of the rules, you know, they're, they're, just, they're there to be, yeah. you know, guidelines. just guidelines. Yeah they're, yeah, they're not rules. They're, they're suggestions. And so, mm-hmm. uh, Park, why don't we get into it. that? Yeah. What, what do we have as our first recommended practice? Our first recommended practice is minimize consumption. Um, again, going back to that digital fast mm-hmm. kind of phrase, minimize consumption of movies television, and video games. Okay, so this is a big one. And for some people, it's a broad category. I know at our house, you know, we watch movies. We've got a Nintendo Mm -hmm. Switch. Uh, Jealous. (laughs) (laughs) It's definitely high on my 11-year-old's list of activities. Uh, But we're all coming from different starting places. Mm -hmm. We want to see a significant change during this time. So for some people, that is going to be stripping it all away, you Mm -hmm. know, unplugging the TVs, putting away the yeah. devices. And I think that can be really powerful. Yeah. And if, if your family's at a place or you're at a place where you can do that, that would be my personal recommendation. But mm-hmm. for some people, I think going cold turkey is just, it's unfathom, yeah. unfathom, something like that. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a hard word to say. Yeah, we all know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> unthinkable. And so I would say just do something that is significant Mm. to you based off where you're at. So maybe that's cutting your media intake in half. You know, I think that would be at least a place to start if you're nervous about going cold turkey. But Yeah, I I love that. Let me ask this. One thing we will talk about at some point, maybe this is jumping too far ahead. Um, Does that mean no movies at all? What if there's some intention behind it? Sure, and I, I think that's a good point. For some people, it will mean no movies at all. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But if you're the type of family or type of person who's like, I just really enjoy, you know, entertainment and it's a big part of my life, 
then just like you said, be more intentional about mm-hmm. it. Instead of you know sitting in your room by yourself with your device yeah. streaming a movie, go out into the living room and invite your family to yeah. watch a movie with you or invite a friend over it. and then talk about what you're watching. Yeah. Instead of just passively consuming, mm-hmm. really be critical in your thinking. Like, is this something that's pointing me closer to God or away from yeah. God? Is is the the life that this movie is portraying, you know, is that mm-hmm. in line with what God teaches us? Yeah. Those are conversations I like to have with my kids yeah. when we watch something. It's like, hey, not everything we see is going to align with what God says. Yeah. How are we seeing this portrayed in this particular film or this show or whatever yeah. it is? So I, I love that because I mean a, a television in our house is a new thing. Like we my my wife and I, we went um almost 10 years without a TV in our house That's awesome. since we got married, you know, and for her birthday, um, her birthday was right around the Super Bowl time. And so um, her family gave us one of their old TVs yeah. so that we could watch the Super Bowl. And so we watched the Super Bowl and it was, it was exciting. It was awesome. And now the TV has become in a sense at times, tragically, almost a babysitter. <laughs> it's yeah. like, it's like, Hey kids, we're going to go throw on a show. So your mom and I can have a 20 minute conversation yeah. and look each other in the eye for the first time all day. And um, so I, I think this is really, really helpful because in ways where that's just been a couple months, there's there's been like an intrusion into our life mm. that was not expected, but it, it has happened. Yeah. And so this is kind of, again, like reclaiming ground. And I know you and I have talked at, at, at some point about this idea of how we use media to kind of like numb us. Yeah. Can you, can you speak to that a little yeah. bit? I, you know, I would just say, I know for myself, at times and definitely what I've seen and experienced in talking to other people that a lot of the times that we're just binging on content, which is what I would advise against, you know, Mm -hmm. if anything else, just don't sit down and and binge whatever type of content you're, you're taking in. Uh, That's often done in order to provide some input so that people don't have to process whatever's going on internally, you know, to, to avoid being alone with their thoughts Mm. and, that can be really scary if you've been surrounded by noise for so long that you mm-hmm. don't remember what it's like to just be alone be with with yeah. God and with your own, you know, personal issues and and things you're processing. So I will say, you know, much like an actual physical detox where you're depriving your body of something that it's used to having or even like a fast where you're, you know, your body's used to taking mm-hmm. in food and then yeah. for a time like it can actually be painful and anxiety inducing mm-hmm. at first if it's something that you're genuinely either addicted to or just really dependent mm-hmm. on and so for some people they might say you know Rhett Parker you guys said this is going to be awesome but actually I'm just freaking it's out because yeah. it's you know I don't want to be alone with my thoughts mm-hmm. and you know my recommendation honestly for that is push through yeah push through those first you know hours or days or whatever it is yeah. and pick a small chunk that you can work on mm-hmm. you know that's realistic like we said uh, and then partner with somebody whether that's you know yeah. a friend or your spouse or your kid or whoever it mm-hmm. is to say hey let's let's zone in on this one area and just yeah. try to see what god could do and then honestly to be healthy people we have to be able to be processing what we're yeah. dealing with you know it's it's not a good idea to just constantly fill our ears mm-hmm. and eyes with noise and distractions so that we can avoid either talking to God about what he's doing in our lives or processing internally what yeah. we're feeling, you know? Yeah. I mean, that could be sometimes, I mean, th- this may come come up in, in, in my life, your life, other people's lives where as we do take an intentional step to remove some of these different voices and the noise of our life where stuff gets like or unsurfaced or whatever, yeah. you know, like yeah. It, yeah, it's uncovered. It, yeah, it gets uncovered. Um, and it's brought before us in a way that maybe we didn't expect. And so I think there's something to be um, talked about there in regard to us being prepared for that mm-hmm. and being mindful of it. And it can happen in kids' lives too. It's not just adults. Yeah. So as a family, you remove, hey, we are going to turn the TV off for 40 days. The, you're you can navigate some potentially challenging waters with your kids too, because there yeah. may be levels of addiction that you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Why yeah. are you like behaviors, you know, yeah. life can happen in really intense ways because of this. And so, yeah. um, as the guy who 
like loves on the kids in our church. Anything that you would say to that as if to equip a parent to navigate those conversations? And... Yeah. Well, you know, one thing I'd say is, you know, as the parent or loving, caring adult in a child's life, if you're the main influence, you know, you you do have a certain you know, position and status and responsibility mm-hmm. to do the hard thing, even even when, yeah. you, you know, even when the reaction is not what you would desire mm-hmm. from a kid, you know, if they're throwing a fit or freaking out or, you know, uh, screaming at you because mm-hmm. you, they don't think this is a good idea. Uh, I think you have to take a step back, just pray for strength mm-hmm. and say, I'm doing this because I love you. Yeah. And it might be hard to see right now, but just mm. try this out with me again. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Yeah. It's this invitation to say we're going to try something different. And like you alluded to, some of these kids they have never lived in a world yeah. where they haven't just had constant intake yeah. of of media of some sort or another. So this is going to be new water for mm-hmm. a lot of people to be swimming in especially young people yeah. who don't remember back to a time yeah. before smartphones and before uh, Netflix streaming yeah. and YouTube content and all these mm-hmm. you know social media stuff for some kids this is this is uncharted territory mm-hmm. and so yes that might be scary yes it might be challenging but it could be exciting yeah and I think what we're gonna suggest towards the end of this is just that, there are things that you can put in place of yes. these things. It's not just about taking away. It's yeah. how do we replace it? I love it. Just like when we're fasting from food, mm-hmm. it's not about depriving our bodies from sustenance mm-hmm. only. It's also saying, okay, every time I feel a hunger pang, I'm going to cry yes. out to God. I'm going to, yeah. you know. There's something find, greater. Yeah, there's something greater that I'm searching for. And so in the same way, those reactions actually point to there's something I'm looking for that I'm mm-hmm. not currently getting. And the parent or guardian in that case gets to say, actually, what you're trying to satisfy yourself with isn't going to work. That's awesome. And yeah. so it, you know, if you keep trying that, it'll never be enough. Mm-hmm. And so let's maybe think about breaking that habit now and mm-hmm. finding what we can replace it with. Man. So. That's I'm, so good. I think it's going to be really good. That's so good. Challenging. Let, yeah. In order to get what, to some of those. What's number uh, two on, on the list, Park? We yeah. Um, turn off all notifications on phone except calls slash texts. Okay. <laughs> that's, so, a, that's a good one. Uh, oh, man. You know, you mentioned this is something you've kind of already uh, been doing. And yeah. I myself also, for the most part, have long ago decided that it's not worth the constant distraction mm. in my life to allow my phone to dictate, yeah, you know what I'm doing and what I'm paying attention to. And so for a lot of us, yeah. this one's going to be tricky it's because really we're we're used to immediately knowing everything that's going mm-hmm. on all the time. Um, but we want to be in control of our devices. They're supposed to be tools. We don't want yeah. them to control us, right? Yeah. And so yeah. I think. In going into your settings and stripping down mm-hmm. notifications to whatever most basic form you're able to, yeah. you're going to take some of that control back yeah. and say, you know, I'll look at my phone when I'm ready and when I want to, mm-hmm. not when it wants me to. Yeah. Because again, the tech companies, they, their desire is to have you constantly yep. engaged mm-hmm. and constantly looking at whatever they want you to look at. Yeah. And for us, I mean, I think we've seen that it is helpful to be present in a moment with whoever God mm-hmm. has us with and not have outside distraction yeah. come into that conversation yeah. or into that place. I mean, I don't, I mean, I, I'm sure that this has happened to you. I haven't asked yeah. you yet, but to be in a room, to be having a face-to-face conversation with somebody yeah. only to have them pull out their phone or start to yeah. to text somebody yep. or, or interact with something while you were talking and to dis- yeah. like you know to become disengaged from that in-person interaction to deal with something that's happening yeah. somewhere else you know with somebody else mm-hmm. it's not a very kind uh response I mean yeah. you got to think about what that's showing the person that you're actually yeah. with uh, I think we've all had that happen to us too. It's, yeah. I mean, and yeah. how many times do we do that to our kids, right? Yeah. So, you know, I know I've many times I've had- Like, hold on, my, hold on. Let yeah, me finish this message. Hold yeah, on, hold on. Exactly. Just, yeah. you know, what, what message does that send to a child when 
you're showing more weight given to the screen in front of you mm. than to the conversation you were having with yeah. them, or, you know, the request from them. So Man. I think this, it's a simple change, but I think it could be really powerful. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it does start with those pings that just pull your attention to look away for a moment. It, it starts there. Yeah. That's, that's, so again, turn off all notifications on your phone. Yeah. Except and in my ideal world, again, you know, being idealistic, being rule follower, yeah. I would say even just get rid of all notifications in general. Yeah. Like during this 40 days, don't let the text messages even vibrate. You know, mm -hmm. typically I have my phone on silent all the time and I'll allow for text messages to vibrate and I'll check yeah. them. Uh, but during this 40 days, I'm looking forward to just setting mm. my phone aside and hopefully not even having it with me all the time yeah. uh, and saying, you know what, I'm going to check it at nine, at noon, and at five or something like that. I love it. Yeah. And that way I can dictate when those times are that I'm interacting with yeah. my device versus the constant mm -hmm. looking, is there something, is there something, is there something? Because I can easily fall into that trap. Yeah, so. I've talked to so many people who have seriously considered it. if I could go back to a flip phone, I would. Yeah. Because it was so simple just to make a phone call or to send a message. But then there's the challenge of like, well, there's, I use my phone for so much more than just calls and texts. Yes. And so I think that, that gets us into that. Yeah, that, that leads us into to number three, I think, really well. Yeah. So, so number three. Number three is remove all apps that are not for utility. So oh, yeah. <laughs> maybe we could define utility a little bit first. Yeah. So I think these are I, challenging, by the way. If we could yeah. just pause to say these are not like small things. These are huge. These yeah. are huge. Yeah. And I will say of of the five suggestions that we have for recommended practices, I think if you were to do just one of them, this might be my my number one really? that I would okay. want you to start with, mm. especially if you're a youth or adult. Okay. You know, because I think social media is going to yeah. be one of those ones that that's not a utility app. I'm sorry. Yeah. And yeah. so just getting rid of social media for 40 days, mm -hmm. I think be a could, game changer. could change a lot of people's lives. Yeah. Uh, so starting there, but you know, we're not saying you have to strip your phone down to, you know, a flip phone status, although calls and texts will be your main reason to use them. But, you know, I was joking about it earlier. I might want to know what the weather is, you know, yeah. for my kids' soccer practice. Is yep. it going to rain? I don't know. Let me check my phone. That's yeah. a, we're not talking about that sort of interaction. You know, oh, I dropped my keys under the car. Let me get the flashlight. Yeah. Like you don't have to take off your flashlight and your calculator Come and on, your, man. your maps. Let's, be, let's get you know, crazy. If you need to know how to get somewhere. Like <laughs> Everyone go buy some fine. maps. Yeah. You know, go to the 7-Eleven. Get a map for the I, city of Boise. I think, yeah, Google Maps and iMaps or whatever it's called. Yeah. That, for me, that's a really helpful tool yeah. and a resource. But I'm not tempted to go check it just to check it like yeah. it's I, I go to it when I need it and that's really the difference right is like is this something I'm going to because I want to get something useful out of it yeah. or am I going to it and it's affecting me Man. in a different way yeah how many how many I see you're wearing a watch right now yes so <laughs> I I got a watch specifically it's a smart watch but it has no notifications on it okay, okay. and I got a watch specifically so that I would look at my watch instead yes. of my phone because every time I'd look at my phone, there'd be a notification of some sort. So That is exactly why okay. I have a watch on. Yeah. I actually don't like wearing watches, yeah. but I decided at the end of last year that looking at my phone to see what time it is was a constant yeah. reason to be looking at my phone. Yeah. And so now since I've got a watch on and you, you know, you can find really cheap watches out yeah. there. It doesn't have to be fancy, yeah. but it just allows me to not have that reason. Yeah. And like you said, usually looking at it to see what time it is involves, oh, here's a text message. Here's yeah. something else. Here's and something so, I have to think about. Yeah. And then it mm. becomes an interruption. Yeah. And so for me, the watch is a simple trick to, yeah. you know, counteract that temptation. Awesome. Uh, and so it might be helpful for people who are trying to decrease their things, but Part, you know, with the youth mm -hmm. thinking about maybe removing social media, you know, things like TikTok and Instagram and yeah. you know, Facebook or whatever the apps are these MySpace. days. MySpace. MySpace. <laughs> That's, I grew up with MySpace. Uh, they didn't have apps back then. No, that was man. It. So, uh, how do you think the youth will do with that call to say, hey, for 40 yeah. days, take a step out of the social media sphere? Do you I, I, I don't know if it's me just being hopeful or ignorant. I don't, I don't know. But I think that there are a lot of students who would long to actually do that. Um, there is a lot of, uh, you know, uh, 
in a sense, a, a feeling of benefit from being connected through social media. But I, again, going back to what we talked about last time is when there was a string of suicides in the Valley, I mm-hmm. asked the students, what do you think is leading to this? What, like if you had to yeah. pick one thing and every single one of them said, I probably social media. It's like, they see that there's an issue with it. But I think the challenge is like, okay, how do I overcome that? Yeah. How do I move forward where that's where all of my friends connect with each other or that's where I get updates about what's going on. I got to be in the know. I got to know what's going on in Mm -hmm. this person's life and that person's life. I think it would be so helpful. And I think there is sincerely a desire to do that. But there's at some point we've got to say, let's do it together Mm -hmm. instead of just, okay, you, you better just get off social media. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think that is helpful. And again, that's one of the the powerful things about doing this together as a church family is to say, Hey, it's not just one of us making a decision to make some changes. This is something we want to try out as a family. Uh, You know, I, I got rid of social media a few years ago, just all together. And for people who are wondering, Mm -hmm. like, is it that big of a deal? I have only seen positive benefits from having social media be out of my life. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I have not seen any sort of like, oh man, I really just wish I could, you know, catch up. Like Mm -hmm. the, the things that I need to know about, I get yeah. told about in other forms, yeah. right? And yeah. it has only been good for my mm-hmm. mental health, for time wasted, you know, for yeah. uh, for relationships, know, for relationships. Themselves. Yeah, you know the, or even just the temptation to you know covet what other people have. Oh, you know, yeah. all these things like yeah. it's only been good. And so I would say again, maybe one step if you're thinking five is too many or this whole thing's too mm-hmm. much try a week, just a week without social media and see if you feel better afterwards. I think, I I think some of the the common hurdles that people have to say, well, Instagram or whatever, it has all of my photos. Mm -hmm. It has all of these, these memories that I've locked in. It's like, um, our challenge as a family for me and my wife was we had to make photo books. Instead, we had to strip those photos off of there. Yeah. And, and plug them into a photo album, which people used to do. <laughs> you know? Yes. And then I, for, for yeah. Facebook, it's like, what about Facebook Marketplace? You got to have an account. Yeah, to, yeah. You know, and so there's there's hurdles that you, there, there are very simple solutions to find your way around it. Um, but the problem is to not let those, there's the difference between an excuse and an obstacle. An obstacle is something you have to find your way around. Mm. An excuse is something you hide behind. Yeah. And I think when it comes to these types of conversations, we have to be willing to identify within our own heart, our own mind. Is this an excuse or yeah. is this an obstacle? Because if it's an obstacle, let's let's find a way around it together as a family, as an individual, as a church. I think it could be really, really good. Yeah, that's good. And I would just say, you know, on the practical, like nitty gritty, how do I do this? I would say delete the apps from your phone. Mm-hmm. Don't just promise yourself that you're not going to look at them because if this is something that's become a habit in your life, what I found is there's a muscle memory (laughs) that is involved in just pulling open your phone. And as soon as it's open, going to whatever those apps are for you, for you. Mm -hmm. I know for me, one thing that I'm going to try to uh, remove from my phone this time that I haven't in the past is my email, right? I Mm. have, I have a work email (laughs) and a personal email. (laughs) And I just have this thing where Anytime I open my phone, I automatic my thumb just yep. goes to my email. I click my personal email. I click mm-hmm. my work email. I look at it. I don't spend a lot of time there, but it's yeah. I don't even think about yep. it. I don't even want to do it. Yeah. It just happens. Mm-hmm. And so for me, one way I'm going to keep from doing that is just to delete it from my phone yeah. altogether. And then I'll check my email from my computer yeah. during work hours, and mm-hmm. I think it will be okay. <laughs> I think I'll still get the same amount of information yeah. in the time I need to. Yeah. Uh, and there will be other things that you just have to make those decisions. Is this something I'm going to delete? Is it something I'm going to leave? Uh, I know I use like a workout app that mm-hmm. for me is helpful. Mm-hmm. It tells me you know what my workout of the day is, and yeah. it times my rest periods. I haven't decided yet whether or not I'm going to get rid of that one. If you get rid of it, I'll pick it up. Dude. Yeah, I, I could use that. You can that, have you know? it, park it <laughs> yeah. free of charge. Uh, and I'm the reason I might leave it is because again, it's not something that I go to just to look at yeah. or be on. I'm never tempted it serves a aside specific from purpose. yeah when I want to exercise to go look at that app. Yeah, and so it's not creating more space for me to be on my phone. I so, see. That's awesome. Uh, let's keep moving. What do yeah. we got for number four? Um, number four, set a bedtime for your phone <laughs> an hour before you sleep and put it in another room and if possible like 
probably going to need a different type of alarm clock then. Yeah, I know yeah. that's that's the first thing almost anybody yeah. will tell you if you say, put your phone away mm -hmm. at bedtime. Uh, and it sounds silly, but most people, I think, either sleep right next to their phone. Yeah. Or what I've heard recently is that a lot of youth just sleep with their phones with them in their bed. Like hmm. they, they never actually put it separate wow. from them, but it stays there. Uh, and so it's become an extra appendage. Yeah. Right? So this is kind of <laughs> the next step in that watch challenge, yeah. right? Is to say maybe get a digital alarm mm. clock or an analog alarm clock yeah. that is not, not digital. Yeah. Not we're well, digital it, detox, bro. Just, Come on. <laughs> <laughs> whatever kind of clock that you can get that's gonna yeah. buzz when it needs to buzz to wake you up. And if, if you can read what time it is. Yeah. If it's analog and you don't know how to read analog clocks. <laughs> yeah. So get a digital. Yeah, I know some kids are still yeah, that's not a thing. It's anymore, real. So, it's real. Uh we have to be careful about that. But <laughs> I just want us to consider for a moment that a lot of us do check our phones mm -hmm. all the way up until we go to bed. Yeah. And do we really want the last thing in our mind that we're going to dwell on for whatever period we get to sleep to be dictated by our phone? You yeah. know, whether that's work anxiety or, mm -hmm. you know, news that's stirring yeah. in us, you know, that all sorts of things. Why don't we decide what mm -hmm. we want to meditate on before we go to sleep? Yeah. That's Man, that's, I mean, there's a lot of studies that have been done about the blue light and, you know, mm -hmm. wear your blue light, glass, whatever, who does that before bed? If you do, you're cool. But <laughs> it's like, there's, there's a lot of like practical, physical effects yeah. of, of staring at a phone up until going to sleep. But then also there's that spiritual benefit of like mm -hmm. replace that time intentionally with being thoughtful. Be, yeah. Just just be with your family for that last hour. It doesn't have to yeah. be the most, you don't have to read the book of Leviticus an hour before bed each night, which would probably put a lot of people <laughs> to sleep, but it's like there's there's intention to it. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And, you know, for husbands and wives, having time where you're, you know, yeah. talking to each other right before bed or yeah. praying together, yeah. you know, what an awesome concept. Yeah, true. Or, you know, reading uh, a psalm together before mm -hmm. bed. All those sorts of things are going to be a hundred times better than anything yeah. your phone probably could do for you. Mm -hmm. uh, and not just the benefit of before sleeping, but the sleep itself, I think, is just worth acknowledging that most mm -hmm. of us don't sleep enough. Mm -hmm. And part of the issue is that we are watching movies until we fall asleep yeah. or we're scrolling something on our phone mm -hmm. and it keeps us awake. Like mm -hmm. you said, the blue light and the you yeah. know endorphins and all these things, it, it's actually keeping us from sleep and mm -hmm. God created us to be beings who need to rest. Yeah, yeah. It's not something that we can just do away with. Yeah. And so I think for youth and for adults, that's like a huge problem that we just need to address head on. It's yeah. like, hey, you do actually have limits. Mm -hmm. And one of those limits is that you need a certain amount of sleep. Yeah. And I can't imagine for students what that's like, you know, staying up till I hear often that uh, like yeah. one in the morning, three in the morning, mm -hmm. and then rolling out of bed at yeah. what, six or seven to get ready yeah. for school. Yeah. I, I mean, there's no wonder why there's such high levels of anxiety and, you know, you're, you're living in a, in a place where your life is fractured by these different compartments that you're living in, not getting enough rest. I mean, yeah. I remember reading an article about um, letting the sun dictate when mm -hmm. we go to bed and when we rise and how that was a part of human history for a, you know, most of human history. This is a blip on, on human history's radar is what we're living yeah. in right now. But I mean, there's no wonder insomnia, anxiety, yeah. depression, when you're not getting rest. And could it be that simple? I, I mean, I think that's a piece of the puzzle. It's, yeah. It but, might not be the whole picture, yeah. but I think it it's at least going in the right yeah. direction. Yeah. So uh, let's, get, let's, let's get round to number out five. these number five. Where are we at? Um, take an entire day each weekend, or if there's a day in the week, um, to be completely phone slash device free as a family. Okay. Yeah. This one might sound the most revolutionary or hard to mm. to digest for people because twenty four hours twenty four hours is <laughs> a long time. Yeah, uh, I it's it's one of those reach challenges. Like this is yeah. you know could you do it? And I can already hear all mm -hmm. of the the grumbling and the what about this and what yeah, about this. Yeah. You know, again, this is maybe an ideal, mm -hmm. but. For one thing, a lot of families already don't have a, a Sabbath type day where they're yeah. just together without intentional you know, as a family, yeah, resting, you know, work or... and responsibilities. Mm -hmm. A Sabbath is meant to be a time to delight and to worship and to rest. Mm -hmm. And so, 
devices oftentimes aren't tools for those purposes. Yeah. You know, they actually distract and detract from those. Mm-hmm. So the recommendation is put it in a drawer. Yeah. Put it, you know, in a box, turn on, unplug the stuff, yeah. whatever it is, and give as much time as you can to just being yeah. intentional about resting, delighting in the good gifts that God's given mm-hmm. you and worshiping. Yeah. And to do that with the community that God's given you, that might be you and your kids and mm-hmm. your spouse, that might be you and your friends, your community, your Calvary community, mm-hmm. your neighbors. Yeah. Uh, but to do it for 24 hours is one way that you kind of take a step and a stand to say, yeah. I will not be a slave. You know, that, mm-hmm. <laughs> a Sabbath is a remembering that we are no longer slaves in Egypt, right? We, yeah. we actually have freedom to mm. worship this God mm. in a way, you know, and to to be in this place of rest because of who He is, and so that's, that's, it's that's it's awesome. a big one. But it, I would say, give it a try and see yeah. what God does with it. Um, my wife and I remember, and this is this is an era in our life that was really kind of a sacred time when our third kid was born. Um, I had about a week, ten days, two weeks, something like that, off of off of work, yeah. and. We wanted to approach it really intentionally. And so f- with my phone, I intentionally did not look at my phone all day long from when I woke up until when the kids went to bed. It was an intentional thing. Um, and there were muscle memory habits the first couple of days where yeah. I like, grabbed my phone because I'm like, nope, I'm going to put that down. But we remember it as like, I, I call it the golden days because it was so interesting what God taught me in that time of the way that my phone divides my mind. Like mm. I'm, I'm unable to focus and be yeah. present. And I also have less energy because I'm torn and the thinking of my yeah. brain even just drains on my energy. And so to do that together as a family could be challenging, but it also could be one of the most enriching things here yeah. that, we're, that we're even talking about. So, so I, I am all for it. Um, we've got a, a backside to this little document that we'll, we'll check out, um, some additional recommendations. Um, and so these are just kind of some like extra yeah, credits. Yeah, so these yeah. might not be the the main five recommendations, but they're just little tips or tricks or okay. things to, to help people get through them. Uh, one of them being just before you even get started, do a little self inventory about where you're at mm. with your media consumption mm-hmm. and your digital device use. And that could be looking at your phone and just checking the screen time yeah. little, I don't know if people know that that's there, but you can yeah. look and it'll tell you your daily average over the course Mm -hmm. of a week of, and then it even breaks down, you know, where you're spending that time. And uh, I know I've been more intentional over the last couple of years about trying to get the overall time to a specific time down. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But I think it'd be helpful at the front end for people to check this out and, and see if they're happy with what they see there Mm -hmm. or if they're challenged to maybe make some changes. Yeah. I love that. I think with apples, you can look at the family's like everybody's like yeah, you can see different screen awesome. times as a family as a whole and number 2 do all necessary digital work from a computer during work hours you mentioned that about emails yeah so. so for me i know this is one thing that i find to be helpful uh using a computer to do work things mm-hmm. and school things you know during a certain part of the day yeah. versus doing anything on my phone, which mm-hmm. again is the temptation to fall into the yeah. the constant use for other purposes or to find other distractions. Uh, but even just kind of setting, you know, quote unquote work hours, I think is helpful uh, so that, yeah, you know, you might need your, your email for yeah. work and, you know, your kids might need the computer to for write school, a report for yeah. school, you know, and those are legitimate Mm-hmm. reasons why that's not really what yeah. we're talking about for this 40 day digital detox if you can you know minimize that time yeah. that's great it might be unavoidable in some yeah. cases uh, but if you kind of constrain it to that period of time you're not going to fall into the the trap of using it for a bunch of other stuff mm-hmm. and falling down the rabbit hole of yeah. distraction. Like so. I'm going to read my Bible on my phone and while I'm there yeah. I get a notification and then mm-hmm. totally forgot about what I was reading because I, you know, got caught up in this. So I love it. Do all digital work from a computer during work hours. The next one is stay off social media altogether unless needed for work. Yeah, and again, some people social media is a part of their job, whether that's marketing Mm -hmm. or something else. And okay, you know, if you have to use it, if you can't get around it, then do it, but do it 
at work time whenever yeah. you know you know your own work hours uh and don't bring it into you know meal times and yeah. conversation time you know set yeah. a different space and time in your life where that yeah. stuff can get taken care of but it's not bleeding into the rest of your life yeah i think of some high school students some some young adults who photography is part of their like it's a it's a little side yeah. hustle you know a little side income and it's like allow that to be an area where you're learning discipline of like block that period of time out to be intentional about that and do it off of your phone do it do it on a on a computer um, but uh, stay off social media altogether. So that's, um, that's a big one. Yeah, avoid binging content. We mentioned this yeah, briefly. Yeah, we, we, we covered that pretty much. You know, yeah. it's just to say, like, if you are gonna allow some use during this forty days, mm -hmm. just let it be that some. You know, and be intentional. D decide we're gonna watch yeah. a movie together. We're not gonna sit down and watch five seasons of some show on Netflix yeah. without going to the bathroom. Like yeah. we're <laughs> we're <laughs> we're gonna be really intentional, yeah. and it's going to be used for some sort awesome. of benefit. Yeah. Um, the last one here is be selective and intentional about what you consume. Things like movies with a family instead of just, yeah, you know, you know and talked about. it's the age we live in, there is content being put out constantly. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, sometimes we don't even think before we watch something. Uh, and I would just say, if you are going to watch something, is it something that will actually be a blessing to you? Yeah. Uh, and if it's not, maybe it's not worth watching, you know, I, and I love it. for the kids as well. So yeah. uh, sometimes it takes a little research on the front yeah. end. Sometimes yeah. uh, you just decide, hey, we're not sure. So maybe not mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. Um, but I think we should move towards, we, we've talked about a lot of stuff we're not going to do mm -hmm. maybe, uh, yeah. which in my mind means all of a sudden there's just these huge gaps of time <laughs> being opened up yeah. in all these young people's lives and these families' lives and personal lives. Mm -hmm. What in the world are we going to do with all this free oh, time? <laughs> this is this is where it gets really fun. This right? is the fun part. Yes, it's like because, learning how to be human again. Yeah, there are so many good things, mm -hmm. simple things, really, that yeah. we might be able to fill into our lives yeah. where we're feeling some of that tension of yeah. you know well now that i'm not on my screen yeah. what what should i be doing yeah. what can i be doing and so again this is all invitational first mm -hmm. of all uh but you can adapt this to suit you and your family yeah. and you know your personality yeah uh, but park what's what, what are a few activity um, ideas we, we have so far? we got this listed down in this little document i mean go on a walk what a novel idea right <laughs> it's like hey. go on a walk go on a hike like yeah we live in such a beautiful we part of the world do. right oh my gosh and you know a walk again talk about just getting outside and yeah. breathing fresh air i think yeah. that's one of the main reasons to get off screens more mm -hmm. is to spend a little bit more time just being outside and seeing the goodness of yeah. god's creation yeah uh, but, you know, say you do a walk around your neighborhood once a day with your family yeah. or once a weekend or whatever it is, mm -hmm. you'll get to talk to each other while mm -hmm. you're walking. You'll get some good exercise. Yeah. You'll breathe fresh air and you might run into some neighbors Crazy. that you actually <laughs> talk to yeah. instead of just driving yeah. by. You yeah. Know? And so there's so many things that could come just from a walk. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I can't, we, you know, we look out the front window, see people walking by yeah. and the vast majority of them won't make eye contact. And probably most often than not, it's because they're staring at their phone, yes. you know? So doing a walk where you guys are like with your head up, <laughs> looking around, like it could be really beautiful. Yeah. And, and um, so it sounds simple, but go f go on a walk, go on a hike, you know, yeah. head uh, head down to the hiking trails in Boise. They're, they're all over. But um, another one is play a board game. Yeah, you know, game, card game, whatever it is. Yeah. This used to be, something that people did all the time yep. when I grew up. I know, you know, we would sometimes have game nights at home yeah. and I have such fond memories mm -hmm. as a kid playing with the adults yeah. in my life. Yeah. Not And sometimes just kids as well, but, you know, dust yeah. off the game closet that at your house, you know, find, drag yeah. out whatever those are. Probably not Monopoly because nobody likes Monopoly. Yeah. It just uh, there's tears like the families two apart. people in yeah. the world that love Monopoly, <laughs> but, you know, find whatever those games yeah. are and just have fun together, yeah. you know, and, be in the same room mm -hmm. at the same time yeah. and just allow that presence of one another yeah. to dictate yeah. the conversation and the activity. Yeah. I mean, it's simple. And probably for most of us, we've got a bunch of games laying yeah. around that haven't been used in a while. It's fun to just mm -hmm. see the goofy things that yeah. happen 
uh, when you you know have a couple yeah. rules and a couple yeah. dice or whatever it, it is. And or if you've got just a deck of cards and you're like, yeah. well, I don't know any games. Instead of Googling it, make up your own game. You know, yeah. like have fun. <laughs> Kids Be are creative. great at making yeah. stuff up. Yeah. Uh, give them the chance. Yeah, and, and they'll usually win too. Yeah. It's weird how that happens. They it's change true. the rules as they go. But it's true. Um, the next one is invite friends over for a meal. Oh man, this is one I look forward to growing in. Yeah. I know so often. What are friends? Can yeah, you tell us about yeah, that? Yeah, like, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, I, I don't even want to try to define friendship because yeah. I, I'm so, you know, lacking in my own life. Mm. But I think we, we've we become so insulated that yeah. this one might be one of those like, oh, that's a big stretch for yeah. us to think about inviting other people to mm-hmm. our home. Uh, but again, the more space you open up for these relationships yeah. in your life and just being intentional, it doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't, you know, yeah. your house doesn't have to be super nice or fancy mm-hmm. or, you know, the meal can be something really simple. Yeah. Uh, it can be potluck style, whatever. Yeah. Doesn't The pressure of, of hosting isn't the idea. Mm-hmm. It's just to say, hey, God has called us not just to love him, yeah. but to love one another. Mm-hmm. And a step we could take is to just invite yeah. somebody to sit around our table hear their story, ask them questions, mm-hmm. you know, be curious about what's going on in somebody's life. Yeah. And usually by the end of the night, everybody feels blessed, it's like, right? Wow, that was amazing. Yeah. We should do this more often. Yeah. You oh, could... I don't have any time though. <laughs> exactly. Oh, and so yeah. hopefully this will open up some of those windows That's of time. Amazing. That's amazing. Um, yeah, I guess this this goes right along. Maybe we should have done this one before. Maybe <laughs> oh, yeah. find a recipe and cook something first. And then once yes. you get it kind of dialed, yeah. then invite a friend over. Yeah, if, yeah. if you're finding extra time opened up in your schedule, you know, why not find a recipe, yeah. try something new, uh, enjoy. I mean, food is such a cool blessing yeah. that we have from God that yeah. we enjoy these different tastes and flavors. Mm-hmm. And I know for me, one thing I hope to do is pass along to my kids, yeah. you know, some recipes that mm-hmm. maybe I know that I want them to know also. That we found on Pinterest, but, right? <laughs> but also, just, you know, the life skill of yeah. being able to cook is something yeah. that kids won't just know that it's instinctively yeah. uh, it's one thing that we can just pass on to them so that they can cook for themselves yeah. and for others when they grow up so you know if you are going to invite somebody over or you just want to bless your family mm-hmm. you know find something and cook it either by yeah. yourself or with the family together I mean, it can be a lot of fun what, what a cool thing if if at the beginning of this you go to barnes and noble or whatever and you find a, a cookbook yeah. and you make it a goal to cook you know three meals out of that cookbook each week and, and yeah. just spend time together as a family and learn how to cook. My, my little kids love to be a part of the cooking process. Um, and they are helpful in, in some ways, you know, yeah. and they make things challenging in others, but that's, that's part of being a family together. Yeah. And that could be such a beautiful use of, of a time instead of an hour and a half long movie, make the cooking event a process. Yeah, I know. Cooking time usually, I mean, at our house at least can often feel really rushed. Yeah. Like, yeah. We have really short amount of time. We mm-hmm. got to, get something on the table and this, you know, if, if you got a little bit extra time, yeah. you can really enjoy the process yeah. as well as the result. And, and so, the cleanup, you know, yeah. that, uh, yeah. maybe one day that'll be fun. I don't know though. <laughs> um, we got a couple other, I'll, I'll read a couple here. Okay. It says practice a new skill, play a musical instrument, do art, read a good yes. book. Like yeah. just a lot of good stuff here. I mean, Go to the library with your family. Yeah. My kids love the library. Yeah. And just so you guys know, our libraries here are awesome. They're amazing. They have so many yeah. great resources for people of all ages. But I'll just say, I think creativity and imagination mm-hmm. is something that many kids are are experiencing in a smaller way than people who grew up before yeah. the, the digital age. Mm-hmm. Uh, because since they're always being fed content, they don't ever have to come up with anything for themselves. You know, boredom is the the birthplace of creativity. I've heard that before, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And so it's if you open up this time to say, hey, have you ever wanted to try to learn to play the guitar? Mm -hmm. You know, I've got an old guitar in the the closet over there. Why don't we pull that out and I'll teach you a couple chords? Or, you know, have you ever wanted to try to paint or, Mm -hmm. you know, write your own story? I know that's something I've been playing around with is yeah. is writing my own mm. fictional stories mm-hmm. to maybe pass on to somebody else at some point. Yeah. And it's just so cool that God, who is a creator and who is very creative, if you look at what he's yeah. made, you know, he calls us to be people made in his image. Mm-hmm. And I think part of that is to say, what can we do with what God has made that is also beautiful yeah. and good? Yeah. And so, you know, whether that's an instrument or some other 
you know, skill, you know, origami. origami. I know. <laughs> got a friend who does origami. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, pick up a crochet needle or yeah. figure out knitting or something, you know. Yeah. These are cool skills that you can practice and learn and mm-hmm. maybe you love them, maybe you hate them, but And maybe maybe the encouragement the there is it's like may that be a a person to person product or project instead yeah. of well, I'll just watch YouTube on teaching me how to play a guitar. Yeah. It's like find somebody who knows how to play the guitar who's yeah. doing something intentional like this during this time and maybe teach your kids how to play guitar if you know yes. how to play or or teach somebody how to do origami if you know how to do origami and you're yeah. one of the three people who do, you know. Um, <laughs> two, two, two last ones. Um, do something kind for a neighbor. Have a face-to-face conversation with someone. Yes. I think this really gets down to the heart yeah. of, you know, love God and then we get to love other people. Yeah. Again, it's maybe taking the the visual from just looking at, hey, what am I doing? Mm-hmm. And thinking about now that I have this time, how can I go outside of myself awesome. and look at, yeah. you know, where has God placed me? Am I in an apartment complex with neighbors, you know, above and below mm-hmm. and on the sides? Or do I have people across the street right next to me? Do I know their me? names? Do I know their names? Yeah. Could I bake them some cookies? Could mm-hmm. I, you know, maybe that's your new recipe. Yeah. You take it over there and just say, hey, I wanted to introduce Try it myself. First, just to, yeah, you know. make sure it tastes good. <laughs> uh, but just finding ways to bless the community that God's put you yeah. in. I think could be really cool. And, you know, to have a face-to-face conversation, Mm -hmm. I don't want our kids to grow up not knowing how to look at somebody, how to engage with them, how to, you know, have meaningful dialogue that isn't Mm -hmm. just, I'm saying what I want to say, I'm going to wait until you're done talking so I can keep saying what I want to say. Yeah. Uh, That is a tool and a, you know, a skill that needs to be developed. It's not necessarily natural, especially when you've only ever known individual yeah. you know life on a screen yeah and so i would love for kids mm. to grow in that i know a lot of adults who can grow in that and myself included I, yeah there's no doubt there's no doubt every single one of us i mean it's a it's a it's a skill it's a grace too. learning how to communicate with with another human um i love it man well there's there's a lot of great stuff in here did you have any any other like kind of last thoughts for us you know again i'm excited i hope a lot of people take us up on this 40-day yeah. digital detox challenge. And one thing I would just say for people, you know, if if anybody out there is considering joining us, plan ahead to whatever extent mm. you can. The more you set in place, you know, what you're going to do mm. and how you're going to do it, uh, it'll help a lot in the 40-day the run. Yeah. If you try to, you know, start this on on the day without prepping ahead, you're probably going to run into some things that mm-hmm. you didn't think yeah, of. Yeah. Uh, you might want to communicate with the people in your life about some changes that you're going to be mm-hmm. making, whether that's with your coworkers or you know your friends, your family members who expect a certain yeah. amount of uh, communication yeah. from you. And if you need to set up a family meeting, you know that's now's the time idea. to do that yeah. and talk about what you're going to agree to do together mm-hmm. and what you're going to agree to do individually and how that can all mash up well. So plan ahead and then do it. Just Just again, taste and see that the Lord is good. This is one of those invitations to see an opportunity for something more. And I think God's going to use it. Yeah. I love it, man. Well, I'm excited. I think we're both excited. Hope people take us up on this challenge. We'll hold us accountable too. You know, if we're in the middle of what, when do we start this thing? April 10th, April 10th, May 19th. Just be asking people if they're doing it. It would be amazing. Join us and please send us questions and challenges you're having. We want to hear about how this is going for your family. And we can't wait. Yeah.